It's darn typical, isn't it, people? There's no news on Fallout 76 for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then when I go on holiday to Australia, there's a bunch of news. Fantastic. How's it going, gang? It's the final render here, and welcome to a Fallout 76 news video. I haven't been able to say that for weeks, but we have finally got some brand new news for Fallout 76, and I'm very happy to deliver it to you today. But as I said, I've been away for a short amount of time, and it's a shame that all this news happened when I was on holiday in Australia, where I was cuddling koalas, looking at penguins, making friends with kangaroos and wallabies. But I am here now, so I'm not immediately up to the punch. I'm a little bit late to some of this news, but hey, we're going to discuss it anyway, because some of the problems with all the patches and stuff have actually been updated since a lot of people have reported on it. So maybe it's good to be a little bit late sometimes. So what has happened in Fallout 76? To kick things off, Fallout 76 has got its very first in-game Wastelanders tease. This is a small little ambient quest you can do inside Fallout 76 right now, which gives some of the lore and backstory behind Fallout 76's Wastelanders expansion and leads us to a very cool location in-game. That has been in-game for a while, so some of you may know already what it is, but I'm not going to spoil it here. We're just going to talk about how to kick things off. So now, in the game, you can find the Grafton Pawn Shop is now open and you can go in there and start a little mystery in there. Once you actually look around the pawn shop, we can see a very nicely decorated location, looks really good, very believable, and inside there are various notes talking about some of the characters behind the main story of Wastelanders, we presume, and also there is a mystery for us to solve. We can activate a black light on a table in here which reveals the names of certain locations or cryptid names for note locations. And once we go to these locations, we can find map fragments which lead to a specific location somewhere in Appalachia. And it's a little treasure hunt which will lead us to this location. Now, this isn't an official quest in any meaningful way. You don't get any rewards. It doesn't appear on your pit boy or anything like that. But it's just a little bit of a teaser. And this is something which actually is quite fun to do. And I would say it is worth doing if you just want to kind of experience this cool little mystery. I would say, though, that it is pretty difficult to do. It's definitely something which probably wouldn't have succeeded if the internet doesn't exist, if that makes sense, because it's kind of one of those communal challenges. But I would say it is a very nice addition to have. I love these little in-game teasers. We actually did have some in-game teasers just before Nuclear Winter dropped to where we were able to find the kind of orange containers that you can find throughout the map. And a few weeks prior to that, we also got our little tease for the Sheep Squatch, where we're able to find some of the bodies of monsters that have been killed by the Sheep Squatch. We could hear the Sheep Squatch in the distance. So it's just a little in-game teaser to let us know that something cool is coming up very, very soon. And not only that, but these teasers often happen a couple of weeks before the main content is released, you know, anywhere from two to four weeks. And that leads me to believe that Wastelanders may be coming sooner rather than later. Bethesda staff do go on holiday very, very soon, and they take some time off till after New Year. So it does mean that we may actually get Wastelanders some point in February, maybe? They said Wastelanders may be coming out at some point in the first quarter of 2020. Now, I fully expect it to come out maybe late March, because that's as long as they could delay it to fix other stuff. But if we get this tease, it may mean that it may be coming out sooner, maybe February time or so. So that is very, very cool. And as I said, it's definitely worth doing. It can be a bit difficult, this little tease, but go ahead and give it a go at first. And if you get stuck, don't be afraid to go on Reddit to find some of the answers and stuff. There is no shame in that whatsoever. But of course, after that, we have also kicked off our festive celebrations inside Fallout 76. At the time of recording, they haven't fully started, but we do have one thing in the game that has already been added. And that is, in the adventure mode, we have got some festive Scorched. And this is a really cool addition to the game, because it means we can unlock some presents and get some of the rarest items in the game available to us to find. And it is very, very cool, and it's a very good cap sync. So how this works is that throughout the map there are various festive Scorched. These are like regular Scorched, except they do actually have brand new weapons and brand new outfits. A lot of these weapons are actually higher level weapons, so rather than just having simple hunting rifles or simple combat shotguns, etc., the Scorch actually may have some very dangerous weapons on them, like bear claws, for example. And also, you'll notice that they do drop Christmas presents for you, or holiday gifts as they are called. And you can find holiday gifts on small 
medium and large scales of presents. And inside these presents, you can get some rewards, even some bad things. You might get something like some coal, for example, because you've been a naughty child. But if you get a good present, you can get like some whiskey, some toys, or maybe even some of the rarest plans inside Fallout 76, including the mounted animal heads. These have actually been in game for a very long time, pretty much since the Pioneer Scout quest line started, but most of them actually haven't been obtainable in game, but now the actual plans to unlock most of these are in the game, including the Mothman one, which I really, really want to go ahead and unlock. And we can get some of the really rare stuff, like the Plasma Grenade plans, for example, which I believe only have a 2% chance of unlocking in one particular event. So... The actual plasma grenade plans are one of the most expensive things to buy on the 76 market. But now, you actually can unlock them with these presents. And a nice new thing as well, is that you can actually buy the components to make your own presents. You need to go to one of the vendors throughout the map and you can buy gift wrapping paper for small, medium and large presents. Now, these actually are pretty darn expensive so you got to make sure you take your great mentats you put your hard bargain perk on and buy all the ones you can afford and not only that but if you go and then make these presents at your crafting station make sure you go and put on the chemist perk and also super duper and you might be able to get some more for your money which is definitely a good thing to keep in mind and then you can actually open these at your leisure and it means you can get some of the really rare plans and some of the really cool stuff like the mounted heads or maybe even just some simple things like some of the regular weapon mods and stuff. So very cool addition overall. I think it's fantastic. And yes, of course, these gift packages are tradable. So you can give them to your friends if you want. And it is technically a loot box, I suppose. But at the same time, there's no way to get these with real in-game, with real world money, sorry. So therefore, I think we can allow this one to slide. And it's just a good way to get people to actually spend their caps rather than hoarding them for months and months and months, if that makes sense. So I really like that. And also, tomorrow at the time of recording, although it may be in just a couple of hours after when this video goes live, heck, it may be live now, we do have some nuclear winter challenges to where we can unlock some cool festive decorations and outfits inside the nuclear winter mode. And that is very, very cool. Last time we obviously had the Halloween event to where we got some very cool Halloween decorations and outfits inside nuclear winter. And in fact... They actually did extend it because there was a little bit of confusion as to when the event ended. So therefore, just a few days ago, you were able to try to unlock some of those Halloween decorations again, which is very, very nice of Bethesda, considering so many people were confused. But now we've got the chance to unlock some Christmas stuff. Now, I have seen some of the stuff already, and it is worth going into Nuclear Winter to try to earn some of these rewards, which is very, very cool. And I can't wait to go and finally unlock them inside Nuclear Winter. There, of course, also were some holiday-themed things added to the Atomic Shop, including a free Santatron Collectron bot. So you could essentially get a free Collectron Scavenger bot, which was very, very cool. And there was also a bit of a problem when Bethesda attempted to fix the 250 plus damage legendary effect on weapons to where the effect simply wouldn't work. But now it actually came out to light that when they tried to fix it, it broke most of the legendary armor effects. And now that fix has actually been hot fixed out. So whilst the 250 damage resistance while reloading perk is still broken, it does mean the initial problems with the armors has now been reverted. And I think I speak for everyone when I say to Bethesda, it's not good that this has happened, but honestly, the 250 damage resistance while reloading perk isn't that special. It just isn't. So I really do think it's okay that you guys can take the time to actually get it fixed. It's not okay that it's broken, but it's not the end of the world if it takes a little bit longer to fix it properly, if that makes sense. But there have also been some very big changes to Nuclear Winter, which I am very happy with with one part and very annoyed with on the other part. The part I really like is that we now finally have a map selector in the game. This is awesome. Thank you very much, Bethesda. Ever since we got our second map, Morgantown, people have wanted a way to change the map in Nuclear Winter, and now we finally have it. It's very, very simple. When you're in the lobby at the start of the game, you are simply given the option of Flatwoods or Morgantown. Pick which one you want, and then that's the one you play, whichever one gets the most votes. And I if it's a tie, it's a random decision by the computer. Time. Works very well, can't really say anything wrong with it. But there was another additional change to Nuclear Winter, which I am dead set against. And I intend to make a full video talking about exactly why this issue needs to be addressed in some way urgently. And that new change is that if there is a lower amount of players in the match, it will actually 
cancel out the first circle so you will start with a much smaller play area. It seems like it's a good idea on paper. If there's less players, make a smaller area, you get a quicker match and you get a more action-packed game at the start with less hunting around an empty map. But, unfortunately, there has been no actual balance changing to do with this new circle. So it essentially means, in most cases, with this smaller map, everybody has a worse start with not enough equipment. And unfortunately, it really does not work. As I said, I'm going to make a full video on this, because I can talk for easily about 10 to 15 minutes about everything wrong with this system. But I think that this change dramatically needs to be adjusted. But thank you very much for watching this video, people. This has been nice to finally do a news video on Fallout 76. Now there is finally some news to talk about. And I can't wait to go ahead and play some more of the game and unlock some of the cool Christmas themed items we can now get. So thank you very much for watching. This has been the final render. Remember to check out all the cool Patreon people in the description below who help support the channel with their financial donations. You yourself, of course, can also do the same. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye.